It's the gospel truth. It's the word of the Lord. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a two-way sword. It's a road map to heaven. And it's heaven's good news. Thank God for the Bible. It's the gospel truth. It's time for the Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. For more information about the ministry and the music of Brother Scott, go each week to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. You can get more messages and music at the website. So be sure to go to www.scottthomasministries.com once every week. And now, here is Dr. Scott Thomas and the Gospel Truth. My wife had a commitment that she had to keep this morning, and uh, so that's that's where she is. She normally goes with, goes with me, but she kind of hinted around that she wanted to hear a good preacher this morning, so uh, <laughs> she didn't come with me. She, uh, I, I remember we, uh, when I, I'd, I've been at New Lebanon about two or three years. And I had preached that morning, and I, you know, sometimes you just in, enjoy your own preaching. And I, I preached that night, and I, I just had myself a time. We uh, got in the car, started up the road, started home, <clears throat> and I looked at her and I said, "How'd you enjoy that tonight?" She said, I thought you never would get through. <laughs> so, uh, I, don't, I don't know what time y'all are used to getting out of church on Sunday morning, but if, I, if y'all get through listening, before I get through preaching, raise your hand, <laughs> and I'll just sit down. Uh, but it's, it's good to be with you this morning. I love Brother Scott. He's a precious man. I'd like for you to turn with us to the book of 1 John tonight, this morning. 1 John, <clears throat> and chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And we'll be reading one verse of scripture this morning. And, you know, this is a holy book. Amen. This is a holy place. Yeah. God is a holy God. And in reverence to the reading of God's word, would you please stand just... One more time, and uh, we'll read verse 20. The Bible says, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Thank you for standing. I know it was brief, but thank you for standing. We, uh, I think we ought to honor God. We ought to reverence God. And I look, I look around in the auditorium, and you ladies know how to dress in God's house. God. You know how to dress, and I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. But anyway, I want to preach this morning on the subject of we know. Now, there are certain things I believe God wants us to know. God wants us to be sure of, and I hope I'm speaking loud enough. Can can y'all hear me in the back? You got good good acoustics here. Uh, God wants us to know that He loves us. You know, I look at my wife. We've been married for over 55 years, and she's prettier and sweeter than she's ever been. And I and I love her. And I want her to know that I love her. God wants us to know that He loves us. How do you measure God's love to us? By looking at the cross. Looking at the cross. You study and you meditate upon the cross and what Jesus Christ, God's Son, went through and you'll know that God loves you. Uh, and God just wants us to know some things. It, it doesn't matter who we are. If we're a child of God, God wants us to know some things. 
Now, I want you to notice this verse. The Bible said, but you have an unction from the Holy One. Now, unction, in my interpretation or my, uh, the meaning of that word, I, I believe it means an anointing, a touch from God. Now, you Sunday school teachers, and I, some of you are preachers. I know at least one of you here is a preacher. You know when God has touched you. Amen. You know the touch of God. Uh, and, you know, the Bible says here, but you have an unction. Uh, uh, it seems like God gives us something here. Now, I want you to think back in the, in the book of Ruth. The Bible says that uh, when Ruth was gleaning in the fields of Boaz, Boaz uh, chapter 2 and verse 16, I, I believe it is, that Boaz instructed his, his men to drop some handfuls of purpose for Ruth. And he said, don't bother them. Just, just leave these handfuls of purpose. Have, have you ever been reading this word? Or have you ever been praying or just meditating upon the word of God? And all of a sudden, God drops a handful of purpose. Amen. And just blesses your heart. Thrills your soul. You know that the presence of God is there. God does something special for you, for his, his children. And then he goes on to say in this verse, and ye know all things. Now you say, well, preacher, I don't, I don't know all things. Well, if we study and pray and worship, then God will continue to reveal things unto us. And you know all things. We know the difference. And a, and, a, and a lie and, and the truth God has illuminated our hearts God has spoken to us and in fact when we were born again when we were saved God done something special for us and, and that was to put his Holy Spirit in, in us now I might have said this before but Oswald Chambers said that the moment that we're saved, God rushes us right into the family of God. God gives us His Spirit. Yes. Now this word know is used over 30 times in chapters 2 through chapter 5. Over 30 times. Or it's derivative. Now God really and truly wants us to know some things. Uh, this is a no-so book. And we got a no-so sal salvation. Amen. How, how can we witness to somebody? How can we come over uh, to someone that they need to be saved if we don't know that we're saved our, ourselves? You, you see, we, we serve a no-so God. And I want us to look at some of these uh, uh, some of these words here we, we know and hereby we know now I like this word know it, it means that God has not left us in the dark in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5 ye are the children of light and the children of the day now I want you to get that we are children of light God doesn't leave us in the, in the dark. And we are not of the night, nor of the darkness. You see, God has blessed us today. We are not like the world. Now, the world looks at us and, and the thinks that we don't know anything, but we know things that they do not know. Amen. We know things that's more important than anything that they know. Yes. Now the definition of this word know is to be well informed about. It's to be aware of. 
to have knowledge, to be sure. In other words, it all comes down to us having discernment. And I believe we ought to pray that God would give us discernment that we might know the truth from a lie. This world is full of deceit. And, and we need to know the difference. I believe that God wants us to know some things and to be positive about some things. Folks, I wouldn't have drove 55 miles over here tonight, uh, today, if I wasn't sure that I was saved. Yeah. I would not stand in this pulpit and, and read from this precious book if I did not know it was true. God is true. And the devil is a liar. When God wants us to know some things, when God was about to destroy Sodom, he said, shall I hide from my Abraham that thing which I do? In the Genesis 18 and 17. God was about to destroy the city. But God enlightened Abraham as to what he was going to do. And we are enlightened as to what God is about to do today. God is about to call this thing to, he's about to bring it to a close. God is, is about to bring his judgment up, upon this world. In fact, God's judgment has already started up, upon America today. Look at the diseases out there and many other things. And, and I'm not going to them. But did you know Job knew some things? Now according to some Bible scholars, Job was the first book written. And they derived that from, there's nothing in Job about the law of God. But Job knew some, knew some things. In Job 19 and verse 25, Job said, For I know that my... Uh, that my Redeemer liveth. Job did not have the Bible. In the fact, the Holy Spirit did not come in and, and, and indwell people in that day. The Holy Spirit came on people, but it did not indwell people. But Job said, for I know, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And I know today, and, and you know today, that our Redeemer is living today and is in the presence of our Heavenly Father, but is also so with us. And he goes on to say, and that he shall stand at that light of day upon the earth. That, when I read that, that astounds me. That amazes me. Job said that, that he shall stand at the light of day upon this earth. Job lived a long time ago, folks. Several thousand years ago. But he knew that Jesus Christ would come and that he would literally stand upon this earth in the light of day. Amen. But verse 27 says, Whom I shall see for myself. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? Job said, I'm going to see Jesus Christ, the Son of God, for myself. I'm going to see him for myself. And my eyes shall behold, and not another. One day, we are going to stand before our Heavenly Father and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Amen. The psalmist says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the Son of Man that thou visited him. The David was saying, I'm, I'm not worthy. But one day, we will lay our eyes upon him who has come and died upon the cross Amen. for our sins. He was made sin for us. What a Savior. I say, what a Savior. We will behold him ourselves. Seems like Job knew some things. And Paul knew some things too. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed against that day. Paul said, I've, I've committed everything to him. 
And I often tell the Lord, Lord, I am yours from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. And I committed everything to Him. Everything that I am. Everything that I have. And, and Paul said, I know whom I have believed. Thank God we can know whom. We can know whom. We can know Him whom we have believed. Now I want us to look at a few, a few, a few of these knows in the Bible in First John here, beginning in the first, uh, second chapter. In the second chapter, verse 3, the Bible says, And hereby we do know that we know Him. Isn't that good? We do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. Now, this is not talking about the law or the Ten Commandments. These were fulfilled by Christ Himself. We don't have to do that. We don't, we don't have to fulfill the law. Christ done that himself. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 3, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 19, the Bible says, uh, that the law was given because of transgressions. That was the purpose of the law. In, in verse 24 of, of Galatians 3, the Bible said that the law was our schoolmaster. What does the law do? The law condemns. The law does not make righteous. The law does not make us good. For we cannot keep the law. It was fulfilled it was kept by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And therefore, through Him, we are, we are guiltless. And we are not guilty of breaking the law. Well, what does it mean? Well, verse 2 here, or verse 3 in 1 John chapter, chapter 2, is talking about such things that we find in Galatians 6 and 2. Bear ye one another burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Isn't, isn't that amazing? You say, preacher, how in the world do I bear somebody else's burdens? It's very simple. Your pastor is going through a very grievous time. Most of you know, or many of you know, what, what it is to lose a parent. Well, he's lost a parent. He's lost his, his mother. My mother's been dead over 20 years. And I still miss her. I still would love to talk with her. I still would love to hear her pray. And Scott is going through grief today. And we can bear his burdens by realizing what he's going through and lift him up in our prayers. Lift him up and pray for him. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous person availeth much. We can bear the burden of your pastor by lifting him up and others and we'll not dwell on that but I want you to go with us to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5 and we'll see what some of the commandments of our Lord are First for 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5 and verse 14. The latter part of verse 14. Be patient toward all men. You ever have somebody pull out in front of you? Isn't that aggravating? I mean, you, be, uh, you can be going down the highway and be in a hurry and somebody will pull out in front of you going 30 miles an hour. That is aggravating. 
especially if you're on vacation and you're in a hurry to get there. Now, I know you men are not guilty of, of that. And, you know, be patient with all, all men. You ever, you ever have a Christian just to come up and say something that you have to bite your tongue not to not to be harsh with them. Just be patient with them. Be patient with your wife. Be patient with your be patient with your children. I, I told the gentleman that opened the door when I came in. My, we went over to see my daughter last night and her grandchildren were there and one of them is two years old. You know what I want to do? I want to pull my belt off and wear that little fellow out. He, he was getting on my nerves. I, when I grew up, I was made to mind my parents and say yes sir, no sir. And he had the brass to say shut up. And uh, you know, you have to be patient. <laughs> you have to be patient. I mean, you can, you can get in trouble with your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Just be patient. But look on down to verse 16. The Bible says, rejoice evermore. At my age, I rejoice when I open my eyes in the morning. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see my wife and, and our home and my neighbors. He said, rejoice evermore. Folks, we got something to rejoice about. Oh, what a Savior. Amen. We can rejoice because we're saved. Amen. Over, in, uh, over in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4, the Bible has something to say about this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4 and 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. God wants us to, to rejoice over what we have. We can rejoice because we're saved, because we're going to heaven, because we'll see our loved ones very soon. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. I mean... It's, it's discouraging to go around and look at people with their chins dragging the floor. Isn't it? But we can rejoice. God wants us to rejoice, folks. And we got something to rejoice about. Rejoice in the Lord. And then the Bible says pray without ceasing. I mean, we don't, we don't have to pray out, out loud. Most of my praying is is done where nobody else can hear me. And I like to get off by myself to pray. But we pray in the car. We, we can pray wherever we are. We can whisper or we can pray in our minds and our hearts. You, you, you remember Hannah? How, how she was praying for a child. And Eli the priest looked at her. He, he thought she was drunk. But she was praying. But a lips moved not. A heart prayer is what God wants to hear. A prayer from the heart. Then in verse 18 the Bible says, and this is keeping the commandments of the Lord. You, you remember what, what the scripture, what scripture that we read there in, uh, first, in, in, in first John chapter 1. If I can get all that to it right, right, right quick. First John chapter one. And hereby we do know that we love know him if we keep his commandments. And he says in verse 18 of 1 Thessalonians, in everything give thanks. Now he didn't say give thanks for everything. But he said in in everything give thanks. You know, Scott can give thanks this morning. Because he knows he'll see his mother again. Amen. Amen. Not give thanks for everything, but give thanks in everything. Quench not the Spirit. Verse 19. How do we don't quench the Spirit? 
not sinning. Don't sin. Verse 22 says, abstain from all appearances of evil. Now folks, these are commandments that God tells us to keep. These are the things that God wants us to do. Let's, let's go over to the book of Luke, chapter 26. I got two minutes after 12. I sure hope y'all ain't ready to get out by 20. I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be through in just a little bit. But in Luke chapter 6 and verse 27, the Bible says, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. <laughs> Not easy to do, is it? Amen. But God said, tells us to love our enemies. Verse 28, bless them that curse you. Verse 31, and as you would that men should do unto you, do ye also to them. Verse 35 again, but love your enemies. Verse 27, judge not. Verse 38, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Folks, I want to tell you something. My wife and I, I was saved when I was 13 years old. My wife, when me and my wife got married, I told her, I said, Ann, we have got the time. We are going to give Amen. God what belongs to, to Him. And the offering comes above the time. Yes. God has never, ever let me down. Never. I pastored for 42 years. I I went, when I left my job and went full time at the ch church, and back in 91, I was making over $65,000 a year. I went to the church for $22,000 a year. My wife liked to die. It, it was hard on her. But God brought us through some way, somehow. God used a little and made a lot out of it. He says, give, not only give our money, but give ourselves. Amen. We just cannot outgive our Heavenly Father. 2 John, verse 5, the last part, that we love one another. Love one another. Then over in verse 18, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many, many Antichrists whereby we know and that it is the last time. Folks, we're, we're not living at the eleventh hour. We're living at the last tick before 12. Amen. Christ is coming soon. You say, how do you know, preacher? We just look around us. Uh, America has turned its back upon God. Amen. And the last straw was what our Supreme Court done just before July the 4th. Amen. Sanctioning same-sex marriage. It's an abomination, folks. Amen. And God will judge America for that. Second, uh, Second Timothy 3.13 But evil men and seducers shall work worse, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Look at verse 29. The Bible said, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteous is born of him. Now folks, we are not righteous in ourselves. We cannot be righteous, but Christ is our wisdom, our righteousness, our sanctification, and our redemption, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. Look at chapter 3 and verse 2, and I'm, I'm going to be through in just a moment. But folks, this, this book thrills my soul. This, this book lifts my spirit. This, this word of God blesses every fiber of my soul. 
Listen to what it says. Chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know. Folks, it says we, we know. What an assurance that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You, you remember the Lord appearing to the disciples in the upper room. The doors were locked. There's no way in, anybody could get in, but the Lord just came right on in. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Someone once said, how will we travel with that glorified body? Well, this is, this is Fleming scripture, and I mean, my thoughts are, I believe we'll travel by the speed of thought. <laughs> Just, if you want to be in Jerusalem, there you are. If you want to be in Dallas, Georgia, there you are. I don't know. You just take that and do what you want. To do. I don't know. Look at verse 14 of, of chapter 3. The Bible says, now I, this verse, folks, has been a blessing to me since I was, I don't know, years ago. We know that we pass from death into life. Folks, listen to that. We know we pass from death into life. Because we love the brother. When I was just a young man, just passing, just started passing a, a year or two, one of our deacons, I was, I was standing out front greeting the people as they were coming out. And one of my deacons come up and kissed me on the cheek. And folks, you just didn't do that. And not then anyway. He, he kissed me on the cheek. He stepped back. And he said, Preacher, I, I love you. And he said, you know why? <laughs> hey, I was startled. I said, no, I don't, I don't know why. He said, I, I can't help it. And folks, if we're saved, we're going to love, we may not like the brother, but we'll love the brother. Amen. <laughs> if we love the brother, we know we passed from death unto life. Amen. We, we know that. God says we know it. we got God's authority. Turn over to chapter 5 and I'm, I'm going to finish. Look at verse 2. The Bible says by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. Do we pray? Do we love the brother? Or do we rejoice? And you heard what we've covered here tonight, this morning. But look over in verse 13. The book of 1 John is one of the most assuring books I've ever read. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. John said all of these things that I've written here in this book, I've, I've written for your assurance. I've written that you may know that you have eternal life. Verse 18, and we're going to conclude with this verse. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. And folks, that verse, when I was a young man, disturbed me. I mean, it, it rocked my soul. Because I, I knew, even, even though I was saved, that I would commit sin. I would say things that I should not say. We know that whosoever born of God sin is not. But then it dawned on me that there was somebody called Holy Spirit that lived inside of me that could not sin. You see, when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, there was a seed planted within us. And that seed cannot sin. For it's of God. It's of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. 
We know that whosoever born of God sinned not. And folks, listen. I don't, I don't know how you stand today. I don't know what your thoughts are. I don't, I don't know if you have doubts. I, I know when I was a teenager, 15, 16, 17 years of age, or oh, I, I, I had doubts. And sometimes now, even the, the devil will attack, but I, I can take it back to this precious word of God. And I can tell you, my devil, I can take you to the place. I can take you to the very spot. And I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. You've been listening to The Gospel Truth with Dr. Scott Thomas of Temple, Georgia. To order this message or to contact Brother Scott, go to www.scottthomasministries.com. That's www.scottthomasministries.com. Be sure to come back next week for more Bible preaching and The Gospel Truth. Yes, I love my Bible, because it's The Gospel Truth.